Now, plants use all the different visible light wavelengths for photosynthesis, the process by which they use the light to convert carbon dioxide and water into sugars and oxygen, but they don't actually need the green light wavelength. Plants only look green to us because they reflect this part of the spectrum. At this research centre in Yorkshire, they're exploring how plants grow without green light. Wow. This is the LED crops facility. It takes a while for your eyes to get used to it, yeah, doesn't it? it's very pink to start with. And all your plants clearly look black. That is very odd. Yes. <laughs> They're absorbing all of the red and blue light. That's one of the reasons we choose that light. But if we shine some white light on, then we can really see the green colour spring out. Oh. So the red and blue lights are the lights that are most efficiently absorbed by the leaves and then most efficiently used for photosynthesis. Do you just bung the same amount of red and blue to all the plants or do you mix it up? Like, how does it work? No, in the facility we're developing lots of different recipes for different crops, so we change the red-blue mix. So we can alter the flavour of the plant, we can alter the colour of the plant, we can alter the oil content of the leaves, we can change the flowering time. Um, we can alter the antioxidant concentrations. That's clever. And why LED? Why not normal light bulbs? Well, these are cold. You can touch them. Yeah. So if the plant gets near to them, it doesn't burn the leaves. And so because you can put the lights close to the plants, again, you can put more plants on top of each other. Yeah, which is why we have these stacked shelves in this facility. The more I'm finding out about this, the, the, the cleverer it seems. It's just such a fantastic idea across the board, isn't it? Yeah, because we can have these facilities anywhere. As well as saving space, LED lights are more economical because they're 30% more efficient than conventional lighting. The researchers here even hope their technology might eventually provide much needed backup for conventional farming. So aside from you know, running out of space, are there any other reasons why we should be looking at this technology for the future of, of you know, growing some of our food? Yes, I think we do need to look at 2012, the difficulties farmers and growers have had in harvesting crops to put on our tables. It's been a very, very difficult year. We don't know whether that's going to be a repeated situation year in, year out. To me, I think everyone should be doing it, but it's not quite as simple as that, is it? No, it's not. No, We've got a lot to learn here. This is the first uh, move into this type of system. Uh, and the economics have got to be worked out. One of the reasons we've established the facility here is so that we can start to demonstrate to the, to the industry out there what the real potential is of this technology. I think that the potential for this kind of farming is huge. It makes sense and it tackles so many of our sustainability issues. Now, obviously, there are still economic and environmental questions to be answered, but I think it's about having the vision to think in the long term. <laughs>